Padre, del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. In pace del Signore sia con voi. Fratelli e sorelle, benvenuti a tutti voi per questa messa domenicale. Oggi, proprio oggi, celebriamo il 28 decimo domenica del anno. Welcome to one and all. Today we celebrate the 28th Sunday in ordinary time. We welcome all of you for this Sunday liturgy. Per celebrare dignamente i santi misteri, riconosciamo i nostri peccati. Prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let's acknowledge our sins. I confess, oh my God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The only potent army is the record of the Lord, and only in our peccati, to conduca la vita eterna. Amen.
seconda lettura. La lettera agli ebrei. La parola di Dio è vera, efficace e più tagliente di ogni spada a doppio taglio. Essa penetra fino al punto di divisione dell'anima e dello spirito, fino alla, alle giunture e alle ritorna, e discerne i sentimenti e i pensieri del cuore. Non vi è creatura che possa nascondersi, nascondersi davanti a Dio, ma tutto è, è nudo e scoperto agli occhi di colui che quando noi dobbiamo rendere conto. Parola di Dio. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him, to whom we must render an account.
entrare nel regno di Dio. I discepoli erano sconcertati dalle sue parole, ma Gesù riprese e disse loro, figli, quanto è difficile entrare nel regno di Dio. È più facile che un cammello passi per la pruna di un ago che un ricco entri nel regno di Dio. Essi, ancora più stupiti, dicevano tra loro, e chi può essere salvato? Ma Gesù, guardandoli in faccia, disse, impossibile agli uomini, ma non a Dio, perché tutto è possibile a Dio. Pietro allora prese a dirgli, ecco noi abbiamo lasciato tutto e ti abbiamo seguito. Gesù gli rispose, in verità io vi dico, non c'è nessuno che abbia lasciato casa, o fratelli, o sorelle, o madre, o padre, o figli, o campi per causa mia e per causa del Vangelo, che non riceva già ora in questo tempo cento volte tanto in case e fratelli e sorelle e madri e figli e campi insieme a persecuzioni e la vita eterna nel tempo che verrà. Parola del Signore, lo vero Cristo. Arrivi in fronte a un ricastro according to Mark, as Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell. And he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of an eagle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, But then, who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, We have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you. There is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Gracias.
se guardate però invece gli accoli nel congioio di invito di Gesù se ne va via rattestato perché non riesce a distaccarsi dalla sua vecchiezza e che non potranno mai dargli la felicità e la vita eterna e a questo punto che Gesù dà ai suoi discepoli e anche a noi oggi il suo insegnamento quanto è difficile per quelli che possiedono ricchezze naturali nel regno di Dio. Ma queste parole, i discepoli erano rimasto sconcertati. Eh, e ancora di più, dopo che Gesù era aggiunto, è più facile che un cammello passi per la frutta di un albero che un ricco entri nel regno di Dio. Ma vendendoli comunque disse impossibile agli uomini ma non a Dio perché tutto è possibile a Dio così come è detto santamente al sangue la parola insegna ai letti che non devono trascurare la loro salvezza come se fossero già condannati né devono buttare a male la ricchezza né condannarla come insidiosa lo stile a vita devono imparare in quale modo usare la ricchezza e procurarsi le vite. La storia della Chiesa è piena di esempi di persone ricche che hanno usato i propri beni in modo evangelico, raggiungendo anche la santità. Pensiamo solo a San Francesco di Assisi, Santa Elisabetta di Ungoria e San Carlo Borromeo. San Francesco ha reso conto che la vera ricchezza dell'uomo è Dio stesso. È proprio Dio che porta la gioia. È una gioia di seguire Cristo, di lasciare tutto per Lui. Se l'uomo è la gioia di Dio, Dio lo è ancora più dell'uomo. Ovvero, la verità di Dio non può che fare risaltare e risprendere la verità dell'uomo. La verità dell'uomo è che è un essere amato dall'Eterno e dunque da tutta l'eternità da sempre e per sempre di, di là dei suoi nervi e del suo corpo torniamo alla Vergine Maria della Macolata che è senza peccato e chiediamo alla Madonna di aiutarci a raccogliere con gioia l'invito di Gesù per entrare nella pienezza di vita per entrare nella pienezza della vita Ieri ho celebrato uh, la messa a St. Mary Church in German Village. Ho comprato il sacramento di confermazione, di ai giovani. Ma ho dovuto cantare in inglese e spagnolo perché uh, ci sono tantissimi studenti e, e giovani che parlano spagnolo. E così ho detto. Yesterday I had to celebrate the sacrament of confirmation at St. Mary Church in German Village. And there are many Spanish speakers there, so I had to preach in both languages. And so I said to them, they told me this was a bilingual mass. I looked in my dictionary, English Spanish, but also my English Italian dictionary. I looked at the meaning bilingual. And in both dictionaries it said twice as long. So <laughs> shorter. Welcome to all of you. Today's gospel has its, has its principal theme, the theme of wealth and how we use it. Jesus teaches that it's very difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven, but it's not impossible. In fact, God can actually conquer our hearts and conquer the heart of a wealth, wealthy person who has many goods and can push him by his grace to solidarity, to sharing his goods with the most needy, with the poor, and so enter into the logic of the gift. In this way, one places oneself on the way of Jesus Christ. As St. Paul writes, He who is rich made himself poor for you, so that we might become rich by means of his poverty. As often happens in the Gospel, everything happens with an encounter. Today, Jesus meets a rich man who has many possessions. He was a person who, from his youth, had observed faithfully all the commandments of the law. 
we still hadn't found true happiness. And for this reason, he asked Jesus a question. How, what must I do to have eternal life? The commandments represent the lowest level, base level, for love and neighbor. They are the first but necessary step in the journey toward true freedom. The first freedom St. Augustine writes consists in being free from committing crimes or sins, such as homicide, adultery, fornication, theft, fraud, sacrilege, and so on. But when, when one commits, begins to not commit these sins, these crimes, and no Christian must, then Augustine continues, only then will we begin to lift up our head toward true freedom. But this is, this is just the beginning of freedom. It's not yet perfect freedom. Returning to the rich young man, on one hand, he is attracted to Jesus. He's attracted to the fullness of life. He has this desire in his heart. But on the other, he's used to counting his own wealth and how much money he has, his riches. And he thinks that somehow or the other, eternal life maybe could be acquired, maybe by observing some special commandment. Jesus can appreciate his profound desire for something more. And the, the evangelist notes, he fixed his gaze upon him. A gaze full of love. This is the gaze of God, which is upon all of us. But however it was, the response to the commandments, keep the commandments, wasn't enough for the rich young man. So he asked Jesus, I've done all these from my youth, what else must I do? Now it's not easy for anyone to say with a good conscience, I've observed all of these. To say that means you're pretty well developed spiritually. You have a great understanding of the law of God. It would be very surprising many of us days to respond to the rich young man knows that despite keeping all those commandments, he's still far from his end goal, which is heaven and fullness of life. So he tells Jesus, there's something still missing. What else must I do? And aware of his own insufficient, he turns to Jesus to ask, and Jesus gives him this answer. Jesus, who is, will be rooted, will be focused on the things of heaven. And then Jesus asks, Come, follow him. Instead of joyfully receiving Jesus' invitation to follow him, to be a disciple, the man's face falls because he has many possessions. Possessions which will never give him true happiness or eternal life. It's like the Beatles song, Money Can't Buy Me Love. The rich young man, his face fell. He missed out on the great adventure of being a disciple of Jesus. He did not see the healing miracles, the exorcisms, the multiplication of loaves and fishes, Jesus walking on water. He missed it all because he was too concerned about his personal wealth. And in this response then, Jesus' disciple, Jesus gives his disciples a teaching. How difficult it is for those who have riches to enter into the kingdom of God. And so the, the disciples, their faces fall too. They're a little bit disturbed. And so Jesus had, answers, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. But seeing that they are still a little bit out of sorts, he says, for men this is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Commenting on this same passage, St. Clement of Alexandria says, the parable teaches the written wealthy that they must not neglect their salvation as if they were already condemned. Salvation is still possible for them. Nor should they just simply throw their wealth into the sea or condemn it as uh, being insidious or hostile to life. But they must learn, and I would say at the foot of the master, in what way they can best use your life and so procure, obtain eternal life, the service of the poor and the needy. The history of the church is full of examples of rich persons who have used their wealth wisely in an evangelical sort of way and who have actually reached a true holiness. We need to think only of St. Francis of Assisi, St. Elizabeth of Hungary, or St. Charles Borromeo. St. Francis realize that the true riches of man, the true wealth of man is God himself. And it is exactly God himself who brings us joy. 
people ask me why I am always smiling, and it's for this reason. Because God brings me joy. And it is a joy, not a burden, to follow Jesus. It is a joy to leave everything for him. To be sure of the hundredfold. And if man, St. Irenaeus of Leon says, man is the glory of God, man is the joy of God, then God is still more the joy of man. For truly the truth of God cannot but shot chance light on the truth of man. And the truth of man is this. And we must never forget it. Man is a being who is loved by the eternal God. And therefore he has been loved from all eternity. And he will be loved forever and from the beginning of the world and forever. Despite his weaknesses or despite his merits and good deeds, he will always and has always been loved. I love it. And that is true for each and every one of you. We turn once more to the back of the Virgin Mary, who had no weaknesses, no faults, was without sin. And we ask him about it to help us to receive the joy, the invitation of Jesus, in order to enter into the fullness of life, to enter into the fullness of the love of God. Come. One person who is choosing to follow Jesus in a more deep way, personal way, is Joanne Marcucci, who will now receive the sacraments of confirmation. She will be strengthened to live more fully the promises of her baptism. She will be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. She will become a soldier of Christ and receive the gift of the Spirit to defend Christ and his church. And so at this time, I would like to invite Joanne, who has chosen the confirmation name Bridget, uh, to come forward along with her uh, her sponsor, Blake.
the world and all those in the world. For leaders of all nations, that they may be handled and offer care for those in need, we pray to the Lord. Hear our During this Respect Life Month, in thanksgiving for the gift of human life and God's love for each and every one of us, we pray to the Lord. We pray that the church continue to sustain in all ways a sin of the sin of the lifestyle as a sign of co-responsibility, promoting the participation, the communion, and the mission shared among priests, religious and lay people. Lord, we pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For all who experience anxiety or live with fear. May the peace of God that suppresses all understanding fill their minds and hearts. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For the parish community of St. John the Baptist, may we grow in faith and confidence that God is present among us and that we might be agents of their presence. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For all those involved with this Columbus Italian festival, the directors, workers, volunteers, and veterans, that they might take the message of faith, family, and friends with them, and live out the message in their daily lives. We pray to the Lord. the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that she may be a faithful witness in her life, we pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially parishioners of St. John the Baptist Church, and for the deceased friends and family of those involved in the Columbus Italian Festival, and for Joe Kua, for whom this Mass is offered, do we pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we ask that you look with favor upon this your family we have gathered in the power of the Holy Spirit. In a particular way, send your loving gaze upon the Italian community here in Columbus, that they might continue to grow and prosper through the intercession of St. John the Baptist and the Immaculate Virgin Mary. Help us to leave everything to follow your beloved Son and come one day to the joys of heaven. We ask this in all things, through Christ our Lord.
questo tedesco insieme alla festa di questo sacrificio perché il gigante è il nostro sacrificio sacerdotale possiamo giungere alla gloria del cielo per Cristo nostro Signore
insieme con la Via Maria e il Madre di Dio, con San Giuseppe, lo sposo del Vergine, della Vergine, con gli apostoli e tutti i santi, che noi diamo il corno per lì, e del Cristo Dio andremo la tua gloria. Per questo con Cristo e Cristo, a te Dio Padre,
Veniamo grazie a 